Okay, so this video is a little bit overdue. Um, I was just going through the backlogs of uh, unedited projects, and um, I think I saw something like 66, 67 gigabytes worth of Caliburn-related videos. So um, at this point, I don't want to go through the entire back catalog, so this is just kind of a quick little intro. I've been using the Caliburn platform for, I think, since June of 2018, so we're looking at about four or five months. For some reason, it feels like it's been a lot longer because uh, most of my nerfing foam-related time has been going towards uh, printing, building, refining, remixing Caliburn parts. And um, I'm actually not a big pundit for uh, spring airs. I kind of prefer the electronic blasters. They just seem to be a little bit more fun. Um, there's a little bit more limit in terms of the accuracy that you can get out of them, which is why I was kind of drawn to the Caliburn platform. That and just kind of the novelty of uh, the open source nature of the project where anybody can download the plans, uh, they can order up a hardware kit, and then they can assemble their own Caliburn, customize it however they want based on their filament choices, colors, etc. And um, it's a modular system, so you can pretty much set it up however you want. And since the thing is completely open source, people are pretty much free to mix and change parts as they, as they will, which I have done. So what we have right here is, uh, this is based off of a kit from Captain Slug. And uh, I think if I remember correctly, it was about $70 delivered. So you're paying about 10 shipping and uh, the kit itself is about 60, which is very reasonable because I've also sourced all the parts individually. And um, after all of that, I'm, I'm just gonna say it's just easier to just buy a kit. Get the kit from Captain Slug. Um, you're giving him support for making the uh, platform available for everyone to make their own. Um, and you're just gonna save yourself a lot of time, effort, and in fact, you're probably gonna end up saving yourself money unless if you're planning on making multiple Caliburns. Um, there are other people on Etsy that are also selling Caliburn kits, but uh, I would urge that you probably hit up Captain Slug first. And if you want to pre-built, because you don't want to muck around with, um, maybe you don't have a printer, in which case, you have to pretty much buy printed parts. Um, you don't want to bother with the assembly or anything like that. I think they're about 170 and I don't know if that's the delivered price. But to be honest, if it was around 170 and you were paying a little bit more for shipping, um, seems like a lot for a Nerf gun, you know, considering that you can buy a strip for like 20 bucks, or you could. But for what you're getting and the amount of time that it takes to print everything up, that price is actually quite reasonable for the performance that you're getting. And once you start using a Caliburn, you're probably not going to want to use any other uh, Springer, unless if you've got like a modified long shot or Prophecy or something like that, that shoots over 200 FPS. And um, in addition to that velocity, because yeah, you can get over 200 FPS out of a flywheel blaster, it's also the accuracy as well. So that's kind of one of the, the real big things about the Caliburn platform. So, um, yeah, what we have here is this is based on the 18-inch barrel. And in general, 18 inches will give you about 20 FPS over the stock 14. Um, I'm going to say, based off of all of my experience and whatever, uh, fooling around with the platform, I would probably recommend against the 18. And um, the main advantage, other than that 20 FPS, is that... Um, it looks like a long rifle, but you can kind of do that by adding the scar barrel, etc. Um, part of the problem is the uh, you'll get exposed barrel unless you used a uh, remix part. This one in particular is the uh, piece that I designed myself, and um, it's similar to the one that was done by Remzak, who was one of the guys that fooled around with K14 setups, but um, I did all this from scratch. The only thing that I remixed was off of the trench plate. Trench plate is a locking piece that holds the front nuts and keeps them from screwing out of place. And that's because the entire platform is essentially a three-legged stool, as I like to call it. It's um, three lengths of 1032 all-thread rod, and that's what's holding the front piece together, and that's what's holding the rear piece together. When you take the rods out, you're essentially left with a bunch of sections of 3D printed parts and some metal um, and some of these plastic whatever. Um, this is not actually support material. All it does is it keeps the print from scraping against the all thread. 
But when you strip everything down, um, everything will fit in a relatively small, long box. And uh, assembling it, um, I'm sure there's all sorts of tutorials for that. But uh, it's something that you can do in the evening, even if you had uh, no prior experience with the platform. So what I am going to do, um, I don't know how I'm going to dole the videos out because I don't really want to flood uh, videos on Caliburn since I know a lot of people probably aren't very interested in it. And since this is kind of a, a boutique style uh, thing as opposed to something that you can just go to the store, buy, and then crack open and modify, it's an entirely different, uh, entirely different world. So when Captain Slug designed this, he kind of wanted to get people back to, uh, I guess they were called like NIC games. I don't even know what that stands for. But uh, higher performance blasters as opposed to uh, modified spring airs that kind of, uh, I guess, generally shooting like the 100, 120, 150-ish kind of range. Um, of course, the irony here is that a lot of the games that you're going to see, depending on where you are in the Bay Area, for instance, um, 150 seems to be the cap for most of the outdoor games for the current league that they've they've been setting up. So 150 caliber is not exactly the, the best match because even with the K25, it's rated at 170. But unless if you assembled your caliber incorrectly, you're probably not going to see um, much under 200 feet per second. So that would still be too too high. So you would need to use um, a weaker spring in order to use that in a game that limits the play to 150 feet per, 150 feet per second. As is right here, I just ran it over the chrono recently, and every time you, you pull it apart, change a part, um, oil the seals, anything like that, uh, change the spring, uh, change the alignment, adjust the uh, string on the on the uh, scar barrel, which is rifling, everything will change the performance of the blaster. So that's kind of one of the downsides and the upsides. Downside is it's like tuning a guitar, except your guitar can fall apart. Um, but when everything is kind of dialed in and you're very familiar with the platform itself, then um, it becomes a lot easier to troubleshoot. You know which parts to have extras of, and doing the maintenance and care and uh, whatever feeding of your blaster, it becomes uh, pretty routine. And uh, so yeah, right now, as it is, this is actually using a K26 spring, which is something you get from Master Car or you can get it from Out of Darts out in Washington. Um, he's got an Etsy shop. And um, this setup is around 230 feet per second. And if you did a little bit of, of squeezing in terms of the seals, playing around with different kind of setups there, you could probably push that into the 240s. But um, it's probably not the best to rate these things based upon the perfect whatever tune, because the more you use it, play with it, run it outside, hot, things expand and contract. Um, you need to be a little more reasonable about where you're going to expect it to level out when uh, it's been used for a little bit. So without the uh, servicing and maintenance, you're looking more like in the 220 feet per second kind of range, which is still um, like three times more than a stock Nerf blaster. So again, this is just kind of the primer for the uh, Caliburn. I have uh, range tests, velocity tests, um, a lot of videos on some of the parts that are remixed. Uh, this thing no longer resembles anything close to a, a quote-unquote stock Caliburn, which, um, to be honest, you can make a pretty skeletonized build out of minimal parts uh, without adding all the extra add-ons. And uh, most of the stuff that I have on here is more or less uh, function-oriented rather than just cosmetics, although you can kind of strip off a lot of the parts and um, the thing will still work the same.